This will be big. Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install mods for XCOM 2. Mind you, this guide is specifically for the Steam version on PC. I'm also playing using the War of the Chosen expansion with all of the DLCs and if you get the game, I seriously recommend you get the whole package as there are way more mods on War of the Chosen than the base game. If you're playing base game XCOM 2, the methods are largely the same, you'll only have to target folders that say XCOM 2 instead of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. And if you got the game anywhere else than Steam, a lot of what I'm going to show you may not apply. And if you're a console player wondering how to install mods, I hate to break it to you, but mods are not compatible at all on consoles, so you can skip this video altogether. So in the first part, I'll show you how to set up the game launcher properly. Then I'll show you the quickest way to install mods via the Steam Workshop. Then I'll show you how to install mods manually through Nexus Mods. And in the last part, I'll introduce you to the INI files for manual tweaks. So let's do this. The first thing you should do to mod XCOM 2, and you only need to do it once, is setting up the game launcher. For the past couple of years, the Steam version now uses the 2K launcher, and while it's pretty slick, it does not work well with mods. Even though they show in the tab, lots of people, me included, noticed that mods just don't load at all anymore. The solution for this is to play XCOM using the old game launcher. So here's how. First, you need to go to the game folder, that is, the folder on your computer where XCOM 2 is installed. To get there instantly, head over to Steam, find the game in your library, right-click on it, go to Properties, then Install Files, then Browse. This will open the game folder, so here we are. From here, head to the Binaries folder, then Win64, then Launcher. And here you will find the Mod Launcher WPF, that's the launcher you want. So right-click it, create a shortcut, then bring that shortcut to your desktop. Before launching it though, right click the launcher shortcut on the desktop and go to properties. Another target, following mod launcher wf.x, hit space, then type the command on the screen exactly as it's written. In fact, I wrote it in the video description so you can just copy paste it. Not sure why those lines matter, but you can ask the third fist, I got the solution from him and it still works. So after adding the lines, click apply at the bottom right and from now on, instead of playing XCOM via Steam, play it through this shortcut and you're pretty much guaranteed that mods will load properly. In terms of the most straightforward modding you can do on XCOM 2, that was the only setting up needed. So now to get the mods, the most popular spot is the Steam Workshop. So heading back to your Steam library, click on XCOM 2 and under the play button, click on Workshop. If you've never used the Workshop for any game, this is basically a place inside Steam where modders can host their mods and it's completely free, no obstacles at all. So here you can browse mods and there's tons of filtering options depending on the type you're looking for, and if you have a certain mod in mind, you can search for it right here. To begin, I would recommend you start by scrolling down and under most popular, click on see all at the bottom. This makes it a bit easier to browse the mods, and once you find one you like, just click on it. This will open the mod page, which is similar to a games page on the store with previews in the center, the date it was added and updated on the right, and below a detailed description of the mod, what it does, etc. To install the mod, click subscribe, and that's it. Seriously, that is literally it. The game will update briefly as it downloads the mod, but when it's done, launch the game via the launcher on the desktop and in the mods tab, it should appear. Just make sure the box is ticked, then hit play. In the case of this mod, you can test it out by going to Soldier Customization and here's the gear. So it works. Most mods work through that exact process, however there are two things to look out for. For starters, as I've said, there are mods specifically made for the War of the Chosen DLC, and those mods typically have WOTC in their name to make it clear, so if you don't have the expansion, these mods won't work. Some mods may also conflict with other mods that achieve similar things or affect the same parts of the game. So to avoid bugs and crashes, just make sure to read the mod description in a workshop thoroughly to see if there could be any issues. Other than that, there is not much else. So for any mods, just browse the workshop, subscribe to the ones you like, and enjoy. Now if I'm being honest, there's little incentive to look for mods outside of the workshop, as pretty much everything is there, but if you got the game somewhere else, or there's this one mod that's not in the workshop, but instead hosted somewhere else, then you'll need to install those manually, which is a bit more complicated, but it can still be done. And to demonstrate how, I'm gonna be installing a mod from Nexus Mods, which is usually the go-to website for most games. To install mods manually, you'll first need the program WinRAR. That's because a lot of mods are actually made up of many files, and so modders compress them into a single file for convenience. And WinRAR is a program that can decompress the mod files to install them. It's completely free and safe, I've used it for years without issues, so link for it down below. So here I got this mod that adds more upgrade slots to the weapons. So heading over to the Files tab, I click the latest version, then download. If that option isn't there for you, you need to create a Nexus account, which is free. Once that's done, the compressed mod file will download, so open the mod with WinRAR, this will give you a preview of the files. So to install it manually, you need to bring the files from WinRAR to the folder that the game is installed in. 
And for that, you need to head back to the XCOM game folder with the same method I used before. From there, head to the War of the Chosen folder, then XCOM game, then the mods folder. If the folder isn't there, just create it. Then drag the mod from WinWar to the mod folder, and you're done. If you launch the game, the mod will now appear. Generally, that's how you mod manually, however, wherever you get the mod from, make sure to read the instructions properly, as there might be something else you need to do. Speaking of which, the next part. XCOM 2 gives you a lot of freedom to manually tweak the game through its INI files. INI files are essentially text files where lots of variables for the game are established, such as the base name of soldiers, healing time for injuries, types of mission, and so forth. So changing the numerical values of these things can drastically change how the game plays, but it's a form of modding that is fairly simple to mess around with as long as you know what you're doing. So for this part, I'm going to show you how to increase the stats of XCOM recruits using the INI files. The only thing you'll need is Notepad+, which is also free and safe, link down below, and install it before proceeding. The INI files are not located in a game folder created by Steam, they usually are in documents on your PC. So head to documents, look for the folder My Games, then XCOM War of the Chosen, then XCOM game, and then config. So here, all of those files contain all of the values set for XCOM 2. Different files do different things, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be using XCOM game data underscore character stats. Right click, then select edit with notepad plus. Using notepad, you'll be able to see the file much more easily. And what this is essentially is the stats for every type of unique in the game, including the aliens. And at the very top, the XCOM recruit at the lowest level. So every new soldier you get has the stats that are established right here. And changing the numerical values will change them in the game as well. So for example, the very first line gives you HP equals 5, meaning your recruit will have 5 bars of health. So if you change it to 10, you will effectively double the base HP of your recruits. Offense is set to 65, which is the base aim of the soldier. If you increase it to 80 or even 100, then the soldier's aim will be significantly better, which can make the game much easier. Mobility is set to 12, this means a soldier can move up to a maximum of 12 squares per turn, so if you increase it to 20, they'll be able to move twice as far, you get the point. Whatever number you change, just make sure to save afterwards, then close the file. This can seem like cheating, and it definitely can be, but it really depends on you. There are many mods, for example, that add alien units that are way more powerful, so you may want to increase the stats of your soldiers to balance things out. And a lot of mods provide their own INI files, and the modders generally give instructions on how to tweak the mods to your liking. And again, I'm only using one file to show you one thing, but all files affect different things, so if you ever wanted to modify something, then you can just Google it followed by INI, and since Chances are someone can tell you online what file to tweak, what line to change to achieve certain results, and now with this video you at least know how to look for the files and how to edit them. And if you're worried about messing things up, either keep up notes of the lines you've changed and where, and you can just revert it later, or better, you can make a copy of the file and back it up somewhere else, and if you screw things up, just bring it back to replace the file you messed up to reset your changes. But that's about it. With this video, you should be able to set up XCOM to mod properly, get the mods from the workshop and other places, as well as how to tweak the INI files. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And if this video helped you out, you can support the channel by subscribing. Not to mention that I'll be making videos for XCOM too soon, so you may get a lot of good recommendations as well. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.